What's up everybody, it's Senpai, and today we're going to teach you how to play some Aqua Force. My soul is tormented by a sucky bitch, call assist, pants are dripping from the way I spit, fell in love with this, since got music, now she in my grips, wanna take a sip of our only signs and sips. No I'm here today, going to go teach you guys a little bit about some premium Aqua Force, what I believe will be the best. The bare bones skeleton for the deck will show you how you have tech spots. Now, a couple of things you need to understand is Aqua Force is more than just turn your card sideways. Swing, 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 Soul Blast, use Tidal Assault Restand, Counter Blast, use Algos to Restand. It's way more than that. It's tactfully planning out each and every single attack and where to use them the, and make them the most effective for each turn. And sometimes, yes, you do need to plan out a whole entire turn, a turn before you get there. Um, so if you're planning out a turn and you want to use Maelstrom skill, for example, um, how much damage, how many counter blasts are you going to need for that following turn uh, based on the units that are in your hand? If you don't need any... Um, does your build support you being able to survive off of one counter blast a turn uh, or two or three? Generally, from what how I build, I build so I can survive off of one to two counter blasts per turn or manipulating that one counter blast that you do have a turn. So next up, we're going to actually show you a skeleton build. And for a skeleton build, it's just basically saying these are the essential units that you need in your deck for Aqua Force. And I'm gonna show it to you for several different builds. But this one I'm gonna show you is for uh, Premium Ripples, which after EB08 is, and that's what I've been testing it for, um, it's actually pretty good. And it can, like, I went on a play testing streak last night. And, well actually, not just last night, but this is over the course of the last two months. Cause even before EB08 got announced, Ripples were still really good. They were pretty much the premier premium deck for Aqua Force, just because of their speed, the amount that they can uh, filter out throughout their deck. If you don't think that they have filtering, I don't know what's wrong with you. Uh, with their manipulating things, and there's one card that I don't have that I wish I did have now, but we'll get to that part in a minute. So, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna show you. The bare bones, so of course, we need to start over the that here. For now, anyway, unless you guys want to use the new one from EP08, which is another Draco kid. But standard uh, starter skill, on ride, draw. We're going to go from grade threes and work our way down. I'll give explanations for each and every single card. Alright, so for grade threes, three, three Miltiades, two. Genovius, which is literally the only expensive card in this deck, and by expensive card for Ripples, I mean the only card that's over $8. And then, in my opinion, the two staple, like two of these are staple. And this is, of course, where one of our flex spots come into, uh, come into play. Now, Miltiades. He is basically the the Aqua Force boss unit that you want to get to for this deck because even like there he's he helps one fill your drop zone he helps filter out potential normal units or triggers to put back into your deck when you legion and he legions with Genovius Genovius is pretty good Genovius uh, let's bring Genovius back over here Genovius and him as long as you have a Genovius in hand, if you're at limit break, which means you're at four damage, for those of you who have only been playing for uh, standard, you counterblast, you discard a copy of Genovius, restand your entire board. Now, that, it kind of like, in my opinion, conflicts a little bit because this, if you have three units in the front row, which when you're a Legion, these count as two units still. So you just need this and a rear guard in the front row, rested, and that accounts when it attacks. And then if you have three units in the back row, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. If you have three units in the front row, 
rested, you get to counter charge and you get to stand a unit. And then, if you have three units in the back row rested, you get to draw a card. So essentially, it's counter charge, stand a unit, draw a card. And that's really, really good, but when you get to the end of the battle, you don't get to make that extra attack with that unit that you just stood up. But you get to discard Genovius, and then you restand your entire board with the exception of the Vanguard. You don't restand the Vanguard. I don't want the I don't want people putting that message out there. Anyway, what makes these so good is, and the reason why I'm running not four of each, is because of a grade one that we're gonna get to later. Most of you who've been around for a while, you understand where I'm going with this, but you don't need as many of these as possible. So you can run the two Genovias, you can run uh, three of these. I believe these are the staple numbers that you need to run for these two units. Three and two. Five units, or five. Now, next, Diamantes. Diamantes in standard, pretty, uh, at the release of EBO3, which was the um, eight Champions of Asia circuit, the original one, yeah, it wasn't that great. He ate up a counter blast, he made you discard, um, he did all these sorts of things, but he gave you an extra attack at the cost of 3k power. Now, in Ripples, why I would choose to run him is because, again, of this certain card that I'm going to show you guys later, um, he becomes, okay, on ride, give me an Excel circle. And the reason why I'm only showing you guys two as a staple, because as of the release of My Glorious Justice in Japan, a lot of people are checking in Hydro Hurricane Dragon, which also gives an Excel circle, and it also uh, pops a rear guard, I believe, for a Counter Blast 1. I'll have this effect upon the screen, but that's what he does. And this still does the same thing, gives you an Excel circle, and you can still do the exact same thing with Hydro Hurricane, well, with, with Diamantes, that you can do with Hydro Hurricane with a certain grade one. Which makes it all that much better, well, not better, but to me it's about the same. But normally I would run four of these. So this is a flex spot. You can split it up 3 1, 1 3, however you want to, between this and Hydro Hurricane. Or even uh, Naval Gazer, I've seen a few people do in the early stages of a uh, building for Ripples. But right now, we're all about the skeleton. So next, we're down to our grade twos. And we can't, in the words of Card Fight King, you can't go anywhere to Aquaforce build without your boy, Tidal Assault. So, four Tidal Assaults. Three Pavroth. These, in my opinion, are the only staple cards in a Ripple build that earned their spots. It's unquestionable that they have their spots. Now, some would argue that you could run old Tidal Assaults. I like this version of Tidal Assault in here, mainly because um, in the build that I run, you don't use that much Counter Blast. You, you build up so much soul, and then there's sometimes when you're on, when you're on Miltiades, but you did a play where you Legion, and then you use the Grade 1 so you could Legion again. Or so you could ride Miltiades again. And you have the only Legion mate in your uh, deck stuck. So you stride and then you go into, you call Tidal Assault. And then you can use Tidal Assault to Soul Blast out that other Legion mate so you can have it for next turn. Again, talking about planning out your next turn. Because you're in this deck, you don't really, if you stride every turn, that's okay. But if you don't stride, you're still good because you're Legion and you're putting back triggers. You're putting back uh, other key units that you need. You're putting back maybe uh, a great, like uh, maybe the main grade three for the Legion, so that way you can do it again. But these are the, that's why I believe Tidal Assault's earned his spot. Plus, he's a double attacker. Plus, his art is really fucking cool. Excuse my language if there are kids out there watching right now. And then Pavroth, he's just here because one, uh, a lot of people don't know this because I did say that we we're playing this as the starter and we're not using the Ripple Ride Chain starter. Um, since he would only have the grade one in Soul, 
he would get the plus 1k power. On hit, he, he, he's a, he'll he be a 10k if you ride the grade 1. And then on hit, if you have the grade 1 in soul, you hit something, you, you hit the vanguard, you choose a unit on the board. It, now, prefer, it says choose a unit, stand it, and give it plus 3k. That's an auto ability. For those of you that don't know, auto abilities are do as much as you can. So let's say this was my board. Um, title Assault swung once, didn't lose his power. I swing with this, 10k, my opponent lets it hit. They're like, oh, he can't restand anything. So I hit, and then I choose a unit, stand it. It's already stood, so it's already fulfilled that um, requirement, and then give it plus three. So now it's a 12k attacker. So there's that. I don't know how many people knew that, but I'm just treating this as if every person that's watching this is brand new. And I'm going to eventually, like every video that I do like this, we're going to progress into more complicated combos, more uh, techier things, so that way we all grow together. So those, in my opinion, are the staple grade 2s for ripples. And now we're going to go into the grade 1s. All right. No, we're not going to go into that guy first. We're going to go into... The, right, the grade one for the ride chain. Silent Ripple Soterio, or Sorito. Um, basically, if you had the zero in the soul, if you had the Ripple Ride Chain starter, he becomes an 8K. And that's pretty much all he does. Um, actually, no, that's not all he does. If you have the Ripple Ride Chain starter, and you ride on top of him with a unit that's not, that's not Pavroth, so if I rode Tidal Assault on top of this, and I had the Ripple Ride Chain starter in, you search the top seven, you dig for uh, a two or a three, it doesn't matter which three, it could be Genovius, or it could be Miltiades, or even another grade one ripple if you have it. But that's what you do, you search for it, and if you get it, you get it, you don't, you don't, that's fine. But these two, like these cards, it's meh. There's a reason why I'm only running two of them, and the reason why I'm running two of them is because of this card. This card, holy shnikes. Um, Flash Ripple Odysseus. This card, let me tell you about this card. Um, two months after he came into the format, and uh, I believe it was, uh, I can't remember the name of the set, or the uh, set number, but it was an extra booster that had... Uh, Commander Thavas in it, and we had got our like second real or second or third real taste of Aqua Force support. And I think he was like it was this, and we got the Ripple Crit in there in that set. Um, but two months after this card came out, Ripples won Worlds. Two weeks later, this guy got cut down to two, being uh, being able to have in each deck, just because he enabled so many things. What he does. You, if he's on your rear guard circle, you take another rear guard, you put it into your soul, you search your deck for the current Vanguard grade. So if you're on grade two, you search for a Pavroth. If you're on grade three, you search for a Miltiades. Or you search for a Genovius if for some reason you've damaged all your, uh, all your other uh, Miltiades. But you do it and then you call a unit with the same grade as your Vanguard out of the soul, give it power plus 2k. So this enables some pretty nutty turn two plays. And back then, we didn't have the same stride rules or legion rules. So people would just stall and stay at grade two just because of this card alone. And that's the main reason why I'm running so few of the ride chain parts for ripples. Now, let's move on to the next card because this guy is he's beautiful. Next... And rounding up my grade ones, my solid choices for the skeleton, it's a uh, wheel assault. Now you can like right now using this wheel assault from uh, BT thirteen completely fine. I've been proxying him as the uh, the one from EB zero eight because my printer ran out of ink and I don't have any more. I can't print out any more proxies. But the wheel assault from EB zero eight, um, his his skill is um. When you ride on him, so when you go from grade one to grade two, counterblast one, draw a card, 
call a card from hand. The calling card from hand is not optional. You have, you must do it if you want to resolve this skill. It's not a do as much as you can. You have to re fully resolve it. So you have to call a card out of your hand. Um, now, with that being said, it is not restricted to the current grade of your Vanguard because essentially it is making you superior call. So what a lot of other people do in Maelstrom builds is just bring out Riptide, Riptide Dragon, Dragon and then just start with some grade two shenanigans that we're going to get into in another video. But this one, oh, and on his second skill, when he boosts, you choose two of your rear guards, switch their position. So let's let's get into a little situation here. All right, let's see. This is my this is my Vanguard booster. I have Tidal Assault. I have this. I have this, and then uh, we'll say that we have it like this. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and swing, ten, uh, swing 9, then we'll swing with the Vanguard, do our drive check, and then I pick these two, swap them. They have to stay in the same battle position that they're in. So, but yeah, that's that's in my opinion, like, the, like, as far as, like, the, 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 the main units, those are, like, the bare bones skeleton, what you have. Now we're going to go over the triggers. And I've been testing this, and it's been working out surprisingly well. And I'm going back to a build that I used to play, thanks to Commander Jaime. Um, I've been going mostly crits. But if you're going to go crits over fronts, you need at least these eight. Um, and why I say at least these eight, because you can go up to as high as 16, which I call the, uh, the Lumberjack build, which is you're literally hitting your opponent as hard as you can, as fast as you can. Because this deck is no chump. If uh, if your opponent slips up and just lets one attack go through, you have technically you can make anything in your deck a re-standard. Re you already have this. You can make your whole board a re-standard because of that. This makes something re-stand. This gives you just another attack. You can put it on it and your opponent wouldn't expect it. Let's see what else. Um, go ahead, give this guy, he can make a he can make anything re-stand, essentially. And then this naturally re-stands. So it's like, hmm, running crits does not seem like a bad idea. Running fronts is good, but I think in this style of deck where it's infamously known for running out of gas after your first or second stride or your first or second legion, you want to go crits. You want to hit them hard. Give them that thumper. All right, so next we're going to go ahead and talk about... Uh, text for the deck or where the cards All that right. you do and have since we're talking about text for the flex spots. spots we're going to start back with our triggers and then we're going to go work our way up so for right now until we get despina the best girl we can run more crits which would be supersonic sailors or um you know whatever or you could go fronts uh, like I said, fronts aren't bad, it's just that they, see, they're not as fast, and they don't provide as much pressure. They they do provide pressure, but not the right amount of pressure for this type of deck, in my opinion. And, and you know, like I said in my previous video, this is how I play. I play fast, I play quick, I want to hit you hard, and I want to hit you fast. Now, this can also do the job, but you need a certain board setup. And in my opinion, it's a waste if you're using fronts when we have things like Kagero and Narakami out, which can uh, which are going to be meta not too long after the release of EBO8. And I'm looking at the longevity of this deck. So not only do I plan my turns out, I plan my decks out for what I see in terms of the meta. So I don't see us having constant full boards. Uh, too often against those type of decks and in my meta which is another thing you need to take into consideration you have to consider what your meta is my meta allows me to be able to play fronts in my area because not that many people play too many too many removal decks like I think we have one Narukami player or two Narukami players but one of them doesn't even show up and the other one heart just plays Royals instead and we have one Cog one active Kagero player because myself, I haven't built it yet. And my other friend, 
He has not built it yet. We're waiting for the end. So, again, that's my opinion on fronts. However you guys feel, that's how you guys feel. If you guys want to try it out and then show me your results, great. I'm definitely willing and open to listening to why you think fronts or crits will work better in a ripple build. So, yeah. Next, we can go draws and heals. So like I said earlier, the Lumberjack build, in my opinion, that's probably what I'm going to end up testing. Um, but, you know, if you want to play more traditional and more safe, you can run four to six draws. So you can get, because like, it still is an Aqua Force deck and you still need pieces. So hitting draw triggers is not bad. But in my opinion, hitting those crits is really nice too. Next, uh, so, and of course it's Otter. Like, why would you not run Otter? And then, of course, you know, the lady the lady of the hour, the heal trigger. So, and this should be enough said. It's just, it's heal triggers, it's draws. These are flex spot cards just because you can do them. And if you wanted to try out the, uh, the crits, the full crit build, that's completely fine too. All right, let's go with the grade threes for the flex spots. Okay, two Diamantes, and like a, he's for the same reason I said before, because essentially you'd have four Diamantes and you have a greater chance of getting an Excel circle and then using Odysseus to re like get the Excel circle, use Odysseus, get this out and have it out at um, at fourteen k instead of just a twelve k. So when you lose power, it's an eleven k, and in premium, a lot of the vanguards are still. Uh, well, the good decks, like top tier decks like Luard, Gridora, those guys are still using 11k vanguards. So, it still hits. Alright, and for grade 2 flex spots, Coral Assaults, Saberflow Sailors, our new promo Harpless, if you guys have at least one more and you feel you don't want it, please trade it to me. Um, and then... All of those. Now, the reason why these are all flex spots, in my opinion, is just because all of these work. What I'm personally testing is Coral Assaults, just because he he contributes to the hitting hard and hitting fast, and he gives you resources back. He gives you soul and he gives you a card. Algos, he is amazing. Do not get me wrong. The deck gets dumb, stupid fast. When you put him in the deck along with his grade one, but then you're you're limiting yourself on counter blast, which like I said before, um, if your opponent is a smart opponent, they will counter blast deny you to where you only have one counter blast turn and you have to choose between either using Diamantes, which is why or Hydro Hurricane or Diamantes or Hydro Hurricane because Hydro Hurricane also costs a counter blast or just using anything else. Now, there's not too much else in this deck that does counter blast, but Smart Opponent, like I said, will give you one damage per turn until they get ready to do their big stride turn. After that, you're pretty much good, but I'm planning for the long, the longevity. So uh, right now I'm testing it without Algos, and that's completely fine. Also, if you guys some got some full art Algoses that you guys wanna trade and or sell me for a uh, Harmony, or not a Harmony, a uh, Melody deck, I'm, I'm open. I'm open. Go ahead and message me. Anyway, Harpless. He is a wash card, technically. Uh, he does give you a, a temporary power buff, which in the form of a plus 10. So essentially you would just attack, and then your Vanguard attacks, you sack him off, and then you draw a card if it hits. So he's more of a risky uh, plus. So you have to hit most likely on turn two, where he shines. Your opponent's gonna let not gonna stop a a twenty k vanguard or a twenty one k vanguard or twenty eight. They're not gonna they're not gonna drop the amount of cards to do that, especially if they're on grade one. They're not going to. So you will get the plus, but in the rare chance that you know you do meet somebody that's like, yeah, I'm not letting that hit. I'm not gonna let you draw another card. You just lost a card from your board in order to potentially plus. So which is why, for me, like if I do play him, he's gonna be a, a two of. 
maybe three, but yeah. Now, Saber Flow Sailor, a unit near and dear to my heart. Uh, this card really shot like she was released in the first Aqua Force set in GBT02, and she really began to shine in the last set of Aqua Force support for GBT, I believe it was 13. It, like, Alexandros brought her to life because before you had to wait, oh man, she's an 8K, and then, oh man, she has to be fourth or more. Alexandros helped that out a lot, along with uh, Champion Thavas. I'm never going to call it what the English people call it. It's Champion Thavas. But she sacks herself, replaces herself, and, draw, uh, and then you get an extra card. So fourth bat or wave four or more, for those of you who used to play back then, if when after she attacks, put her to the drop zone, draw two cards. Pretty good. And she's still really good. Like, Pete, right, right now, you have to pretty much choose. If you don't play Coral Assaults, you play Saber Flows. If you play Saber Flows, you don't play Coral Assault. Or if you want to try to do a resource build, which I'm actually in the process of testing uh, after I get done with my... It's on my next testing list after I test Ripples. I'm going to test a generic premium... Uh, I'm getting resources deck. So, I'll let you guys know how that works out. Next, for the grade one, um, Kelpie Rider Nicolas, which is the Algos card, the Algos Searcher. Uh, you can run Theos, because Theos are still really good. People underestimate him a lot. Um, you could run... Battle Siren Melania. You can run Chloris. You could run more Cerrito. Uh, you can run Penguin. And if you were to run these cards, well, I have another Stride Neighbor, but still, you should uh, you should run two if you're gonna run Stride Neighbors at all in this deck, because you know just just in case it doesn't work out. Now we're gonna go over all these. So, Nicolas, if you run um. If you run Algos, you run this. There's no question about it. You run four, it's good. On place, because you can do some stupid things with this and uh, and uh, Odysseus. So like, I had a turn. I had a turn one on my first turn, where and I went second. So I rode this, got an Algos, called Odysseus, called another thing, got the pro got Cerrito. Then called this out of soul. It already gained plus 3k on its own from its own skill. But then Odysseus gives it another plus 5. So it makes it a 13k by itself. And then that makes a 20k column if you put it in front of the uh, Odysseus. So you get to search for Algos twice. For essentially getting rid of one card. And you get a 20k column and then you get your Vanguard column. So that's pretty good. It helps thin out the deck. It helps make the deck a lot faster. A little bit more consistent. Next... Theo. Theo, a lot of people sleep on Theo. If your opponent is not conditioned to knowing, huh, Theo doesn't do much on his own. He just gives power, but he gives power. Like, he makes your Diamantes a little bit more dangerous. He makes Tidal Assault a little bit more dangerous. He makes anything that restands a little bit more dangerous because that thing could have a crit. If you drove check a crit and it's on a Tidal Assault or it's on a Diamantes that's on an Excel Circle, if it's on a Tidal Assault, That'll make that title assault a 37k attacker, or I'm sorry, a 32k attacker because you're going to lose 5k, obviously, because it wasn't the first attack. And if it's the uh, if it's on a Diamantes, that's going to make Diamantes what? Um, 22, 30, 38, and then you'll lose 3k. So it'll be two 35k swings with a crit. People need to stop sleeping on this card. It's so good. It's so much better than people give it credit for. Does it deserve a full four spot? No, I don't think so. But he deserves at least a two to three spot, if anything. And here's where I get into the more little bit techie stuff. And we're going to go over it in order of importance, in my opinion. Penguin. Penguin, so like I said, when you're planning out those turns where you want to, when your opponent's limiting your counter blast, you can easily make the fourth battle now because of the new wheel assault. He is so good. So you get to the fourth battle, activate this, you get your counter blast back, and then you can activate anything else that goes on. 
in the middle of a battle or for the next turn. Next, Chloris. If she boosts something that attacked fourth or more, Soul Blast 1, bind a card. Later on, when your Vanguard attack, you can use that card to guard for you and it goes into the drop zone. So, there was this thing where people were using the, uh, there's heals that came out, um, a, a series of heals that came out where if there were two in the drop zone and you G-guarded with one of them, if you G-guarded with one of them, then you could bind the two heals and then you could either soul charge or you could counter charge. And you could keep using those over and over again. So you would use them, you would bind them, and then you would use her skill. Because she just needs to be on the board. You don't need to do anything special. So then you'd call them both, boom, right there. Because you can call as many cards from the bind zone as you want to, the guardian circle. And then you can use them over again if you have another heal on your drop. If you have another heal in your hand. Next, two more of this, just to add consistency. He doesn't do anything special. It's just to add more consistency, but then that takes away from your other flex spots and your other power spots that you do have to thin your deck and or to make more attacks. I don't recommend it, but you can for consistency's sake. If the having the grade one in the soul, which is not that important, just to have it in soul. Next, stride enablers, because there's gonna be times where you don't get the Diamantes, or if you do get the Diamantes, you have nothing to stride with, you know, stride enablers. Like, I'd be running two, but I'm too lazy to go, go get the other one and sleeve it up and put it in here, um, even though it's in the other room. And then finally, Seagull Soldier. He also gets something out of the soul and gives you plus uh, 3k. And this doesn't matter what turn it is, but the part where it really matters is when he boosts and it's the fourth battle or more, after that battle, he goes back to your hand. So he becomes at least a 5k shield to go back to your hand, or something that you can use to stride for your next turn. Oh, I'm sorry, I almost forgot about a girl, Melania. Because most of the strides that you're going to go into are Thavis based. And, like, at least for, like, the first or second stride, if you don't have... Well, I'll get to that later. But you can use her. She can attack from the back row, and then she gets a skill where it's counter blast one. You draw a card, and she gains plus 5k. So she becomes a 12k attacker, um, 12 to 12, uh, yeah, she becomes a 12 to 22k attacker, depending on if you're using Excel 1 or Excel 2, and if she's on an Excel circle or if you have Wheel Assault out. There's a lot of variance in this deck, and like I said, you have to plan out your turns. Like, it's going to be, and I know it sounds like ridiculous to plan out your turns, but you have to. Like, these are things that you have to, like, start taking into consideration. You want to start planning out turns, you want to plan out your attacks. If your opponent has like just one rear guard and then a uh, vanguard, swing at the rear guard, bully the rear guard. If they finally let it go, if you got them to guard it at least once before they realize that you're just punch, you're punking that rear guard to drop cards out of their hand too because it's the only rear guard they have. Success. You've gotten one extra card, so then you can direct your, uh, you can direct some attacks straight to their vanguard then if you want to, or you can direct some attacks. Straight at the rear guard still, if you want to like make them really work for it. Unless it's Grand Blue, don't do that. Um, just swing face at Grand Blue. Anyway, next we're going to get into the stride zone. And we're going to talk about what's solid there. And then what are some tech spots that you can run. And uh, and then I'll go over some plays that All we right, can do. And, gentlemen, and that'll be the video. So now guys, we're going to this isn't too zone. long for you. And these are what I believe to be the absolute necessary units. And at the minimum number that they should be in at least of. And this is just because I don't have my premium collection stuff. But I do have three Valios and I have a uh, Prognator Dragon for Aqua Force coming in. Or with well, the Magellanica Nation coming in. But these are things that I believe, with barring those, I believe need to be in the deck. So, two Commander Thavas. One Wailing Thavas. Um... You can never go into this first stride, but you most of the time are going to go into Commander Thavis first stride. Just because, yes, he's like four or five years old, but he's still really good. Uh, there was a point in time where this card was like a $100 card a piece, and now he's only sadly like $2. Anyway, um, also, did I mention the selling point of this deck? It's cheap. Um, anyway, so 
Command and Thalvis, you know, regular stride stuff, discard a grade three, or cards start equaling up the grade three. And then once per turn, act, it's an act skill once per turn. You flip a copy of himself, you choose one of your rear guards, give it plus 5k, and then it gains the ability to attack from the back row, which also adds in some more nutty stuff to like just do more attacks if you don't have that many attackers or you don't have any restanders. So the Thavis line, you at least need these three. This one is ooh, GB3. Uh, when this unit attacks, for each battle that your rear guards attacked, your opponent chooses one of their rear guards and retires them. Oh, that reminds me. I'm sorry, I completely glossed over his GB3. His GB3, uh, it's the same as uh, the first Thavis that came out. On the fourth battle or more, when the fourth battle is made, your opponent choose, you choose three rear guards, your opponent chooses one and retires it. So it takes this skill, amps it up to the next level. So if you do three attacks with rear guards, remember, three attacks with rear guards, not two rear guard attacks and him, three attacks with rear guards. So it has to be three with rear guards. You choose three of your opponent's rear guards and you retire it. Um, so if there's a pesky, like there's some pesky rear guards on your opponent's board, fuck them. Uh, sorry for the lack of a better word, but fuck them. Nuke them bitches. Um, because I've been in situations where I couldn't attack that much because there's a Hanley on the board. And I can do way more than five attacks in this deck. Your opponent, like, and my opponent's limiting me to my counter blast, and if they've been properly counter blast managing me, then I'm stuck. You know, I'm stuck, and I can't do much. So this helps take care of that. So you get as many attacks as you can, and then you just boom, just go straight for face. His next skill is counter blast one. For each battle that your rear guards have uh, performed, he gets plus five k, and your opponent cannot grade with grade one units. So in my opinion, those the con and these two skills in tandem with each other, very good. Well, not I'm saying that these two cards you can't use those because it's not like we can do a stride legion like people thought we were gonna be doing, but instead we got V era. But whatever, that's besides the point. The point is, these two skills, very good. So that's the necessary requirements for the Thavis lineup. And next. Alexandros. We got two Alexandros. Base minimum. All right. Alexandros is a card that gets better over time. So for those of you who are not familiar, he is at the end of the battle that he attacked. You counter blast one. You flip a unit up in your G zone. And then for every unit face up, oh, you picked and then you pick two rear guards. Stand them. For every rear guard, for every card that's in your G zone face up, those two rear guards that you picked get plus 5k power. So imagine standing like standing a Diamantes because you swung first to get the plus 3k. And then you swung with another rear guard. Oh, and this is a wave second or third only. So you can either make one attack or you can make two attacks. There's a lot of dumb stuff that you can do with this deck. Um, and I'll show you guys later. But so you get your two attacks normally. One of them will be on Excel Circle. If you have two Excel Circles, you do your two Excel Circles. And they don't even have to be rested rear guards. You can choose standing rear guards. But um, you let you do that. And then on average, I'm giving my rear guards plus 30k if it's my second stride turn or more. Because this guy right here flips himself up. So then when you stride into this, you'll flip another one. So you have three cards. So that's plus 15k. So no matter what, as long as you have... Well, actually, yeah, it does matter. But on average, it's like between 15 and 30. And this also depends on if you G-guard. And there's like so many other things that can be taken into account. But generally, you want to try to do it. You want to go into this after you have at least four units face up. So you have plus 20 to your rear guards. And then that's it. He just smacks. He just smacks cheeks. Next. A mainstay since he was introduced... There's no way you can build an Aquaforce Premium deck without this gentleman. Lambros. Uh, again, if you guys got some of them full art SP Lambroses, hit your boy up. Like I said, I got, I have a budding 
dominate in that normal, technically, turbo discard Numatama deck. I have a premium uh, Numatama deck with some SVRs. And, you know, I got a Melody deck. So, hit your boy up. I'm looking for them. Anyway. Lambros, he is basically free Alexandros, but his power gain is only limited to 10k. Now, back when he was introduced, this was game breaking. Now it's kind of manageable, but it's okay. Because on first try, you can still use him, and he flips himself up. You can still use him, and then you won't gain the power. But that's okay, you, get, you still get the extra attacks. If it's GB3 and onwards, he gets the power. Lambros is so good and so many people underestimate him because one he's free So if your opponent's been counterblast managing you and I'm gonna and I'm saying this word over and over again Because I'm gonna have a video talking about counterblast managing your opponent To for them to, to limit them on their skills and what they can do which requires knowledge of other people's decks anyway um, But he's free so if they've been man counterblast managing you you don't have to worry about it You can't go into Alexandros that's okay. Like, your free one, like, these are your free strides, essentially, where you don't need, to, well, these two are your free strides where you don't have to worry about counterblast. These guys are your, <laughs> your premium strides where you have to pay a cost, but their effects are really fucking good. And technically, this one's half off because you still get to retire their rear guards without using the, uh, without getting the power gain in the guard restrict. But, it's so good. Like, these guys are all good. Like, and they all have some form of being able to uh, just do some nutty stuff for free and or close to free. Next, we're going to go into G-Guards. Uh, two Galphilia. Right now, one Ice Barrier. And one Iohannis. Um, these are subject to change. But this is never going to be any less than two. You can run like four of her and it wouldn't be bad. A lot of times for skills like uh, like Alexandros for flipping something else face up, I usually pick Galphilia. Why? Because you can Soul Blast and then you can counter charge. Or if you're facing against Link Joker, Soul Blast and then turn one of your rear guards face up. Because And because it's not unlocking, it's just turning the card on that circle face up. You get around Chaos Breaker's dumb skill. So, a little bit of, little bit of tidbit for you in case you're afraid of playing against a premium Chaos Breaker. Next, Ice Barrier Dragon. Aqua Force, here's a secret. We don't have too many really good rear guards, or G guards, but uh, he, this is borderline our best one because on first battle or fourth battle or more, he gets plus 10k, so he becomes a 25k shield on first and fourth only. So wave two, live. Uh, wave three, this is what I go into. And the, for this, I'd just flip up a Galphilia if I haven't already. Or even if I did, I'd still flip up a Galphilia. Um, but she's really good. Like, she could be damn near busted. She has no wave restriction, but I'm just saying she's three just because first, fourth, second. Um, her skill is counterblast one, flip up a G, uh, unit in your G zone, and for each rear guard that you have, and this one is power dependent on you, for each rear guard that you have, she gets plus 5k shield, and those rear guards that you have cannot be hit, and they get resist. Uh, for you, those of you don't, that don't know what resist is, resist is basically, uh, they're hex proof if you play magic, or they, you just can't target them. That's it. You like those rear guards to you don't exist anymore. You can't do anything to them. So yeah, these are the staples I believe that should be played in every G zone in a premium Aqua Force deck. Not even just not even just ripples. There's a premium Aqua Force deck. Period. So if you're not playing with those, I don't know what you're doing. All right. And next, let's get over to the flex spots for the G zone. Flex spots for the G zone. Drum roll, please. One more Wailing. One more Alexandros, because he doesn't require you to flip himself. A Sea Breeze for the mirror match, because you need to big brain your fucking opponent. If your opponent's, if you come across the random dude that's playing Ripples in premium, you'll be so glad you put this in there. And then a Ractome. Ractome helps filter. 
as far as G guards go. This could be another. This could be Ractome. This could be a Dismal. Whatever. I don't play. I don't play Dismal just because we have that one G guard that's, you know, kind of last one. And Dismal is free, but that one adds shield value, which overall, you know, helps everything. And it blocks the other rear guards from being retired. It blocks them from being attacked, which is why I value that more than Dismal. Ractum helps you filter because I can't count the amount of times where I've Ractomed and just dug digger, dug deeper into my deck and then got a unit that I needed so I, either I could stride or make a certain play for the next turn because a lot of times you, you can plan out but then things can go awry and then things can go not the way you want them. So, you know, these cards are all like simple and simple and sweet, easy to explain. So now, let's get into some plays. All right, so now I've set up a board. Uh, we just wrote Diamantes. We have one card in soul. We have three open counter last. And so what we're going to do, well, we just wrote Diamantes, so this isn't on the board yet. But we're going to discard a grade three to stride. Normally, uh, if I had it, I would discard Diamante so you can go into the new Prognator Dragon for Aqua Force. But I want to show you a play where you go into Commander Thavis first. And then you're going to use his skill, flip up himself. And then, actually, yeah, yeah, this is how we're going to do it because it doesn't make a difference either way. Because we're going to go give the power here. I'm going to do that so that way we remember that we gave him the power. Call this to your Excel circle because, again... On Diamantes. So, and this isn't even really a play. This is just like a basic thing that you can do. And I don't know if you guys know this or not. So you're on Excel 1. So you swing 19. You Soul Blast. You Restand. Swing 19 again. And then at this point, this is where you need to make your decision. Either A, do you want to swing with this for 12 at something? Because if you're swinging at a Protect or in another Excel plan, this still hits. If you're swinging at force, you swing like this for 23 so you can hit numbers. Like I said, again, plan it out. And it depends on the situation. So we're going to pretend that we're playing against uh, Grand Blue because everybody's saying that they're going to be so good. And I do believe that they're going to be good. They're a lot better than what people are giving them credit for in the beginning. And as, you know, OCG tournaments, you know, sh our results are showing. So you're going to swing 12. Then... Just in case, you're swinging 9 at a rear guard. Then because for stride, for those of you that don't know, the plus 15k power goes to this. So this is 27. This new wheel assault is 8. So this is 35 to your vanguard. You do your drive checks. Uh, let's just say we got no extra, you know, real things or whatever, right? So at the end of the battle, you take this, take this, and you do that. This way, you still have your two multi-attackers on the board and you're protecting in my opinion the more valuable one the one that doesn't cost you counter blast and you're putting this one out there and it's like and they're gonna target it they're gonna be like well it's a multi-attacker and he has counter blast i'm not gonna let that thing live next turn so then you got no triggers but you're on excel circle now so this thing is 22 but you're gonna do this swing counter blast one discard a card that doesn't matter from your hand and then he's 19. Most likely, if, if it's a Protect deck and they haven't gotten triggers, that's good. Um, but if they did get triggers, they're going to swing at rear guards, whatever. And then swing at a rear guard, and then that's the end of your turn. 